Hi everyone, my name is Zindi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Here we talk about my experiences in the areas of faith, finance, and lifestyle. If that's something that you'd be interested in, please click on the subscribe button and follow along with my journey. I'm gonna have to do this video a little bit differently because this is my only window where I can film. My husband just left to practice golf so I want to film while he's away because I'm not that confident yet to be filming while he is in the background so I just want to do it while I am alone so I can you know, just really do anything that I want to do or say anything that I want to say. It's Saturday morning and I have like a lot of stuff to do. I actually just loaded my first laundry so you will probably hear that in the background. So that's our background music for the time being. It's just that, you know, on Friday nights I choose to relax after a long day of work. I just don't want to do anything. I just want to chill and then leave everything that I need to do for the following day. So. I'm gonna do some cleaning while talking to you guys. I hope you don't mind me doing that. Today I will share with you how God humbled me and taught me how to fully rely on Him for financial provision. I actually grew up surrounded with poverty, chaos, neglect, sickness, like everyone's getting sick around the house. And it was not really a good environment to grow up in. I mean, we weren't always poor. There was a time when we had plenty until my father decided to be full-time gambler <laughs> and womanizer. So that's when our lives started going downhill. So basically, my mom was the only one working to support everyone. Well, I won't really call it like supporting everyone, but yeah, she, she was the only one working. While my father was very busy spending all of her money with women and gambling. Despite all that though, like my mom always supported my father no matter what. So that's really weird for me. They have this world of their own where they're only the two of them. They don't think about their kids at all. That really confused me a lot growing up. Like, is this normal? Until when I grew up, I learned a little bit something about psychology. So I somehow understood how things were when I was younger. So he's a narcissist and she is codependent. So not the very best match parents out there, to be honest but that's that's what god gave us so with that kind of upbringing needless to say we had to learn to tend for ourselves so we learned to just survive on our own that means i had to work through college so for me to be able to get a diploma and find a better job for myself so then after that along with my two other sisters we took the breadwinner role we were like the ones in charge for our siblings education medicals and anything in between and it wasn't really easy because i was young at that time all my friends or other people that i know were so busy um, enjoying their life exploring their options sometimes they ask me what i want to do and i'm like i don't know i don't have a choice i can't really do much i don't have much option i just want to finish my studies so i can work and then i can support my other siblings so they don't need to go through the things that i need to go through it wasn't it wasn't very easy at all like it's hard to try to figure out growing up and who you are while also trying to take care of someone else. So all of this stuff were happening, like I have to be responsible with my siblings while I was also going through some things. And some of it were actually very horrible that I don't wanna go into details. It's just some of it were very heartbreaking it was it was very chaotic it was very hard and i don't really know what to do or 
who to run to. In the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all this confusion and hardships, that's when God showed up. That's when I encountered Him and got to know Him. And somehow that actually changed my perspective in life. He has given me hope to carry on, to keep going on. I think that I was on a dead end, but after I encountered God, I realized that things are just temporary like everything that's happening everything that i'm going through and all the sacrifice that i need to do at that time that will somehow come to an end and that um, i will have the chance to really focus on my personal life on my own life and building things and doing things that i really want to do for myself okay this is hard <laughs> i thought it would be easy to do this but doing stuff while talking on the camera actually is kind of hard so why don't we sit down i'm gonna make myself a chai latte and then we're gonna have a sit down and talk about this heart to heart so i actually used to be a big coffee lover like um, i worked in a contact center back in the philippines and i worked night shift so i can easily go through three to four cups of brewed coffee in one night <laughs> and just about a couple of years back i realized that coffee was actually adding to my anxiety so i started winning myself off from caffeine and decided to get a replacement so this is the chai latte that i'm using i got it from organic chai i ordered it online um, it still has caffeine on it, but not as, as strong as coffee. I just put a little bit of milk to it and that's how I make my own chai latte at home. So I got this brother from Ospure. I was using a different one before. Something that I got from Target, but that actually wasn't frothing right for me this one have a few settings on it and it makes sense so i bought that so since i got that and i got my chai powder i started making my own chai latte at home so i don't buy or i rarely buy chai latte from coffee shop now I was active at church since I encountered God like I do small groups gathering I do some speaking and I also go to campuses to share the word but something has happened of course when you are being very active or if you are doing the, the works of God the enemy is not gonna stand still he will always do something to get you distracted and the sad thing is he won over me so I left the church for some time and then I moved to Australia in 2022 I just felt like God was calling me and leading me back to him but somehow it wasn't easy for me to go back to church until very recently when we faced the challenge of finding a home it was completely difficult and i realized how powerless i am without god like he is in complete control of everything he owns everything in this world well i live in perth so i don't have any idea what is happening in other states or other suburbs but here in Perth there are hundreds of people that's gonna show up for one listing so the competition is really stiff so that's when I just fully surrendered to God I did my best I saved the money that we need we're looking and looking but we can't find any that would suit our needs and there are lots of people who have the capacity to bid for a higher rent than us. I was losing hope, like I can't do nothing at all. I'm, I'm done, like there's really nothing I can do anymore. So I have to lift everything to God and let Him do His work. 
So that's the first time where God humbled me and showed me that I am nothing without Him. But hey, that's not all of it. I felt like God is really trying to teach me a lesson this time. So He is putting me into another test. And this time it's about finances. Like for those who don't know, I'll be on maternity leave in three weeks time and I won't have my full income then. So that's gonna be really like a huge trouble for us. Think about it. Rent alone is costing us 2200 and we have utilities and we have baby coming. So it's gonna be really, really tough for both me and my husband. I'm actually very worried because I know firsthand what it's like to be a breadwinner, the pressure that it takes, you rarely get a good night's sleep and I'm about to put my husband through to that situation right now. But then that's when God reminded me that Hey, Zindi, this situation is not just for you. I'm not just trying to reach out to you, but I'm also trying to reach out to your husband. So this situation that we're going to go through right now, this is God's way of molding both of us to be better people, to be better parents so we can give our daughter the kind of life and nurturing that we didn't get growing up. So, in conclusion, I believe that God is putting me and my husband through this situation so we can both learn to fully surrender to Him, to fully rely on Him, and to fully trust Him that in the middle of all this, He will provide for us, that He will take care of us, and all we need to do is to just go to Him and let Him do His thing. Just remember, God will not give us anything that we can't carry. You might think that you are alone in times of trials and you go through the challenges without knowing how you're gonna get out of it but as long as you have that relationship with God you can be confident that he is the one directing you that he is the one guiding you and he'll gonna take you through it I'm not telling you to not to worry about it because I know firsthand that is easier said than done. But I encourage you to just bring all your worries to the Lord and let Him do His work. He is just waiting for you to learn to be open and honest to Him. He is just waiting for you to bring everything that you are worried about, your burdens, your heartaches, your pain. He's waiting for you to lift it up to Him so He can do something about it. So when you are bombarded with thoughts of despair, don't dwell on it. Just tell it to go away. Like what I do is I say, Satan, not today. I don't welcome you. You are not welcome in this household. You are not welcome in this family. Go away. I know my God will never leave me and will never forsake me. And he will take care of me no matter what. So make it a habit to declare your faith over your circumstance. Like, I can't wait until I see God's plans comes to fruition. Because I know that this thing that I'm going through right now, He is gonna use this situation to bring me and my family to a better position. So, let me know in the comments how you're doing right now. If you're going through some things that you want us to pray for, leave it in the comment section. I will pray for you. I'll see you in the comment section and in my next video. Bye for now and oh, subscribe!